Sarah Thompson is it for freedom here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Anjali Khamet. Anjali? We turn now to Iran, where nearly two months after the disputed presidential election that generated mass protests, the crackdown on opposition members, activists, journalists, scholars, students, and ordinary citizens continues. As court proceedings in a mass trial of reformers and protesters continued into their second week, a top judiciary official has acknowledged that some of the arrested protesters had been tortured in Iranian prisons. Iran's prosecutor general referred to the deaths of the detainees at Kahrizak detention center in Tehran as, quote, mistakes and painful accidents which cannot be defended. The director of the notorious prison has reportedly been arrested. The opposition says at least three protesters died in this prison, including a senior aide to the defeated conservative presidential candidate Mohsen Rezaei. Defeated reformist candidate Mahdi Karoubi has alleged that some of the prisoners had been raped. Meanwhile, the mass trial of over, well, 100 people accused of subversion and trying to topple the government continues. The court proceedings have been widely criticized as show trials. The accused have given controversial confessions and admitted to being involved in Western-backed plots to stage velvet revolutions and color coups in Iran. Opposition leaders have condemned the confessions as forced, and on Sunday, Revolutionary Guard officials called for the arrest and prosecution of opposition politicians, including the defeated presidential candidates, uh, Mir Hossein Mousavi, Mehdi Karoubi, and the former president, Mohammed Khatami. Well, we're joined right now by er, the leading Iranian dissident and journalist Akbar Ganji. Uh, in a letter to the United Nations High Commissioner on Human Rights, Ganji, along with other Iranian intellectuals, has accused Iranian political leaders of crimes against humanity. In 2001, Akbar Ganji was imprisoned for six years for writing about the murders of dissident intellectuals. He was finally released after an 80-day hunger strike. Akbar Ganji joins us now in our Firehouse studio. Uh, he is translated by Hossein Kamali, and that's the translation you might be hearing in the background. Akbar Ganji, we welcome you to Democracy Now! Um, what is happening in these last weeks? What about these trials that are taking place? Look, after the elections that took place in Iran, Mr. Khamenei, who was the leader of the country, uh, came to the Friday prayers and ordered uh, that the people should be suppressed. And the people were uh, gone down, and according to their own admission, 20 people were killed. And according to what dissidents say, more than 300 corpses um, um, exist, and they are being returned to the families one by one. Thousands of people who were uh, on pro protest in the streets have been detained, and almost all of the homeless uh, forces and their leaders are detained and are, and are in prison. This is the Islamic Republic regime. Uh, and since its very inception and the very first decade of the revolution, started by omitting and deleting uh, the communist dissidents and then liberal dissidents, and now it's the turn of reformists who have been part of the Islamic Republic, uh, and they have held positions, high-level positions in the Islamic Republic. Now they are detained, they are imprisoned, and they are under torture, and they are kept.